Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. We are Weedy and Bernard with Explore As We Go. In this video today, we decided to put together the top 9 most frequently asked questions that we have received after sharing our last video about the Sen Regis Maldives. We hope this will give you more insights to better help you plan your future trip to the Maldives and make the most out of your experience. The St. Regis Maldives is a picturesque private island resort crowned by many as the ultimate beach destination for a luxury vacation. Once closely regarded as exclusive only to the rich and famous, travelers now can enjoy a slice of this paradise when the St. Regis brand was acquired into the Marriott portfolio in 2019. Number 1. Which is the best Marriott resort in the Maldives? From the St. Regis to the Ritz Carlton, W and JW, Weston to the Sheraton, and even an upcoming Le Meridian slated to open this fall, there are plenty to choose from within the Marriott brand. Which is the best? That's always up for a debate. However, in today's video, we have narrowed down to our top two picks within the luxury category. Drum roll, they are the St. Regis and the W Hotel in the Maldives. The St. Regis scored high points in our books for its ultra-modern product and spacious villas for its lavish and futuristic designs. Guests can enjoy pristine white sand beaches with sweeping views of crystal clear ocean along the 22 acres of private atoll without feeling too trapped in an island. The hospitality here goes a long way beyond the signature St. Regis Butler experience. Dedicated at your disposal 24 hours a day where nothing is too small or outrageous to ask for. It is the epitome of barefoot luxury without discounting the exclusivity. Originally opened in 2006 and recently renovated in 2015, the W comes top two in comparison due to its H hardware and quirky laid-back designs. Offering a more playful Maldavian vibe, the W Hotel makes up for inexperience. Capitalizing on a vibrant wildlife surrounded by stunning lagoons and breathtaking reefs, boasting as some of the best house reefs in any resorts within the Maldives, making it easy to spot the famous resident turtles. The service here goes parallel to its signature whatever, whenever slogan. Number two, how to book and stay at this resort. A night at the St. Regis could easily set you back thousands of dollars. Even when looking at the cheapest standard garden villas, on a low season, cash rates can begin at 980 US dollar, including taxes. The most cost effective way is to take advantage of the fifth night free when booked using points. When using points, the St. Regis Maldives is a category 8 hotel, which comes with a hefty 85,000 points per night price tag. The key here is to find 5 consecutive nights and an off-peak pricing at 70,000 points. Compounded with the fifth night free will result in 56,000 points per night. It is also worth keeping your eyes open for any ongoing promotions. Just like the one that recently ended that offered an additional 10% off on all off-peak points, reducing the rate to only 50,400 points per night. Rewards availability are usually released in blocks of 7 nights, closing 365 days from today. So it's always good to search for dates when rooms are released in the system early. Or take advantage of low season or off-peak periods. However, if you do not have enough points or hold any Marriott status, your best bet is to search and booked through a Marriott Stars travel agent. These rates booked through agents tend to be on the pricier side than the Marriott website, but often includes multiple benefits such as free breakfast, resort credits, upgrades, which usually ends up saving you a few hundred more when you factor in the dining and activity costs. Number three, what is the best way to get to this resort? If you have the moolah, you can travel in style with the resort's very own private yacht, Norma. Starting price begins at $10,000 per sale. 
that takes you directly from the docks of the airport to the doorsteps of your own private villa. For regular people like us, expect to pay a mandatory transfer fee of $745 and $449 for children aged 2 to 11 by a local seaplane company. The one-way trip will likely take you around 40 to 45 minutes and sometimes making multiple pit stops at other resorts along the way. So always ensure that you are booked on flights scheduled earlier in the morning so that you get the most out of your time by arriving at the resort early. For all of you travel hackers out there, I know what you're thinking, but unfortunately, there's no other way around this as these seaplane operators tend to be a monopoly. Ferry operators are also far too few and overall never economical ferrying one or two passengers per island, resulting in really high costs just to rent a ferry. Number four, which are the best villas in the Sin Regis Maldives? Every single one of the 77 rooms in the Sin Regis Maldives are all well-appointed villas. But deep down, as seasoned travelers, we all know that some villas are slightly more advantageous than others. Some have better views, while others have warmer private pools because they get more daylight. We're here to cover them all. Let's break this down. The villas are basically broken down into five categories. Each are special in its own way. There are the garden villas, beach villas, overwater villas, overwater suites, and the premium bungalows. For this video, we'll focus on the overwater villa category. As these type of villas tend to be the most popular in the Maldives, iconic for the sweeping ocean views and reef fishes swimming under your bed. At the top of the overwater category are the overwater suites. These villas are some of the largest one bedrooms available in the resort. There are only eight of these well-appointed villas and they all come with extra costs or if you're lucky enough to score an upgrade. They are located on room 508 518 to 522, 526, and 535. Our personal favorites are 535 for the best sunset views along the longest amount of daylight, 520 for the best sunrise views, and has the most privacy as it's the only end facing villa on the boardwalk. The next category down are the strings of sunset facing overwater villas. They are a tad smaller than the suites but share the same layout and the size as the standard overwater villas. They are located on room 530-2544. Our pick goes to 530-539 and avoid rooms from 539-544 to onwards as they are built towards an angle facing the whale bar, where patrons dining in these bars can actually look into your bedroom, making privacy less comfortable. If you cannot afford the premium or preferred view villas, room 523 to 529 are always great options as they face away from the resort, providing the most privacy in the island along with unobstructed views of the ocean. For families with small children or guests that values convenience to be located closer to all the activities on the mainland makes beach villa a great option. All beach villas are also north facing so you are guaranteed longer daylight with warmer pools by the deck. Our top picks goes to 307, 309, and 310, as they are less nestled by foliage and also built closer to the beach for unobstructed views of the ocean. Last but not least, the cheapest standard rooms are the four garden villas. They share pretty much the same layout as the beach villas, just with the exception that they don't have any views or direct access to the beach or ocean. Number five, are elite upgrades guaranteed? The short answer is no, not especially during peak season. For an island of over only 70 something villas, there are only so many preferred suites over the water. So if there are those specific villas you want that we discussed previously, simply just pay for a small premium for the upgrade prior to your arrival to secure them. On a personal note, as titanium elites, we did get a complimentary upgrade to an overwater suite because we reached out to the team many weeks in advance to let them know that we were celebrating our anniversary. We really lucked out that the resort went above and beyond to upgrade us from the garden villa. So upgrades can happen, but not always guaranteed. 
Number six, when is the best time to travel to the Maldives? Peak season begins from December to April, and off-peak season are usually from May to November. Predicting the weather in the Maldives is almost impossible. What we do know is the warm tropical temperature is consistent at 30 degrees Celsius throughout the year. The best time to visit would be the dry season, coincidentally happening during the holiday period from December to April, consisting of days with mostly sunshine and little rainfall. Whereas off-peak season picks up from May, which typically brings the monsoon raining season, and then starts slowing down during November. During our five night stay in late November, we only experienced two days of rain and the rest sunshine. Number seven, how much can you expect to spend on dining and activities? Staying in a resort in a private island can be exclusive, but it can also become very pricey when you factor in dining and activities cost. For the most part, dining expenses are completely unavoidable as you're basically held captive in the resort through the duration of your stay. Having said that, there are plenty of options at the resort depending on your budget and preference. If cost is never an issue for you or planning to celebrate a special occasion, private dining experiences are among the best to make the most out of your vacation. Decanta comes in top of the line, sending you back $495 per person. With a semi-private dining experience and an underground wine cellar, you can indulge under Swarovski chandeliers, fine dining style with unlimited vintage wine pairing. Prefer an outdoor experience? No problem. Dine in private by the beach with sand on your feet and enjoy fresh caught seafood grilled to perfection. Or dine at Cargo, another outdoor dining experience with special menu only available upon request all setting you back at easily $300 per person. And now for the regular people options. Based on our stay as a couple, we spent an average of $300 per day at approximately $100 per meal without alcohol. Dining mostly takes place at the resort's two main dine-in restaurants, Elba and Oriental, serving a wide variety of Asian and Western fare, followed by crust and well bar that mostly serves snacks and tapas, which can double off as a full meal sometimes. Last but not least, in-room dining is always an option, as some entrees such as a $29 chicken wrap is some of the cheapest item you can find on the menu. Activities can be subjective depending on what you want to do in the island. There are plenty to do in the island that doesn't actually cost you anything. The resort provides complimentary bikes, snorkel gears, kayaks, and paddle boards, as well as free yoga and cardio classes every morning at the gym. If all else fails, lounging by a private pool with a good book is never a bad idea. If you're more adventurous in exploring outside of the island, excursion starts at $70 per person to hire a speedboat to explore the nearby coral reefs, to a whopping $600 for a full diving course. The Iradium Spa has some of the most idyllic views with relaxing treatments starting at $125. On and all, we highly encourage you to refer to the online menus and price lists through the links we have attached down below the video. Number 8. How to not go broke while staying in the Maldives. Let's face it, when you are staying at a 6-star resort such as the St. Regis, Saving money is probably not an option, but here are some ways we're going to share with you how to offset these costs. Capitalize on your Marriott Bonvoy status. I can never stress this enough. Checking into the St. Regis with platinum or higher statuses can actually save you a pretty penny. One such example is selecting daily complimentary breakfast as your platinum welcome gift can save you up to $110 per day when you dine as a couple, as the breakfast here costs $55 per person. Kids under 12 can also enjoy free breakfast up to two children per elite member. From time to time, Marriott also offer dining discounts for elite members, 
with up to 20% off on all food and beverage consumed within the resort. As of now, this is still an ongoing promotion that expires in June 2021. We also recommend eating a late breakfast, skip lunch, and eat dinner at one of the restaurants, or wake up super early and have breakfast and sit until lunchtime to maximize on your breakfast benefit. Instead of eating at fine dining restaurants, we recommend eating at an early dinner at Kraft or a snack at the Whale Bar during sunset as dinner. You can also request for in-room daily fruit bowl amenity as snacks. Clearly, the only way to save is by managing your eating habits, but as we mentioned before, there are tons of free activities that you do not need to pay for. If you have the tendency to get hangry like us, the last alternative is to pack extra dried foods such as ramen, trail mixes, or energy bars to help you tide through the days where you want to just avoid restaurants or room service. Though this might not be the best way to spend your vacation, but it's always good to have the option to choose when you're really hungry late at night. Also, take advantage of the generous free water bottles refills by taking them from your room when you have dinner at the restaurants, so as to avoid paying $14 a bottle just for water. Number 9. How has COVID impacted changes to the resort facilities and service? COVID-19 has changed the entire travel industry, including the Maldives. The Maldivian borders reopened for tourism in July 2020, with the exception of the capital city, Male, being off-limits. Prior to arrival, visitors must have a negative PCR test 96 hours before departing to the Maldives. Visitors also must submit travel health declaration forms and download the national contact tracing app upon arrival. These should all be notified if you have an upcoming stay with the St. Regis Resort. Another issue to consider is having insurance coverage prior to your arrival, as a mandatory 14 days quarantine will be imposed within the resort or to a government-appointed facility in another island if you are tested positive for COVID prior to your flight home. You will have to bear all costs and 14 nights at this luxury resort on your own expense can be an overkill for your budget if it's not planned for. Apart from that, expect the usual COVID protocols such as temperature checks, social distancing, and enforcement of wearing face coverings in enclosed public places. Like most resorts, self-service buffet breakfast is a thing of the past. Only limited service buffet or a la carte ordering is available at the Albo restaurant at the St. Regis. As travel restrictions are constantly changing during this ongoing pandemic, it pays to take a few minutes to update yourself on any new travel laws within the Maldives prior to making any future plans. Before we end this video, here are a few quick tips to help you maximize your benefits during your stay at the St. Regis Maldives. If you enjoy traveling in style, a fun tip is to request for the signature Bentley to pick you up at the airport to the transfer lounge. And speaking of lounging, the Great Lounge is an excellent spot to unwind for a quick snack, relax, or even take a shower before hopping onto your seaplane to the resort. So make sure you set yourself extra downtime for your international arrival and departure to fully utilize this benefit. There are also plenty of free events taking place in this island every week. Our favorite is the daily evening ritual witnessing a champagne savoring along with complimentary bubbly to enjoy the sunset. We hope you enjoyed this video and found our information helpful if you are planning to visit this amazing resort. Let us know in the comments down below if you have other tips and tricks you would like to share with our viewers. Also, be sure to subscribe and like our video for more awesome travel video content.